Take for your punishment, slave. I sometimes scream out, no. When really, I mean, yes. Yes, yes! And this is why we have the safe word. Until we hear the safe word, we will not stop. She's not a Christian! No! Safe word with Jason Rouse. Check, check. One, two, one, two, one, two. Hey, this is uh, Jason Rouse, and uh, welcome to the Safe Word podcast here on a... Um, what day is it today? Wednesday, December 7th. Wednesday, December 7th uh, with uh, Quincy Martin. What's happening, man? Good oh, to be here. How are you doing? I'm excellent, man. I'm excellent. You're uh, You're in New York. Yeah. You're going to hang out with me tonight. I'm hanging out with you tonight, man. You I know bail, it's going to be a you, blast. You got bail money? I always got. I'm hanging with white people. I don't <laughs> think I can get arrested. Yeah, but I'm... It's either that or I'm the fall guy, so it's one or the other. Although, <laughs> I think that between the two of us, the cops would have an argument over who they'd shoot first. That's also very true. If they had one set of handcuffs, they'd be like, shit, do we put them on the white guy? <laughs> the white guy's going to get a The white guy's got, like, the tattoos running. with the skulls and shit on it and the spacer earrings. Fuck that guy. Yeah. And then they'd be like, yeah, but he's hanging with a nigger. I mean, that's still two points, the right? One, who has AIDS, A <laughs> or B? They both look like carriers. <laughs> but you're, uh, you've come into town. We've been uh, talking about Canadian nostalgia yeah. and how yeah, difficult yeah. it is to be uh, stand up in Canada. Mm. Mm. Where's because uh, we've all got one hundred shows that were terrible. <laughs> like, is there one place in city? I'm getting ready to go over there in April. Well, for me, I find, uh, let's see here, the worst I have done, shit, man, I think it was... Edmonton? No, 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 no. It was, it was <laughs> Ontario. It was a freak show. Ontario? It was Ontario, but it was like one of them one-nighters on the road... It oh, was like yeah. Al- Alliston or some shit like that. That sounds like a familiar. Uh, and it's like, I they it was it was a different breed of white people. Like there's white people that know that black people exist and know that to some degree they can watch TV and see some or know what they're about or they know call the, it a safe distance. They they know some of the stereotypes <laughs> surrounding blacks. Anything you know what I'm saying? But when I went there, it was like. Were they curious? The last or they, they were just like there. What there is a nigger on stage? What the fuck is going on here? Having a fit? And I mean, it was like it, what, what is? I didn't pay. But they say that I didn't pay twenty dollars for this shit. Doesn't matter who's on stage at that place. Well, no, nah, because I did it with two white guys, and they were blasting the shit. And I was like, what the fuck? And they they were really upset, genuinely upset about having me. And I bombed pretty bad. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you know, whatever. I I fought it. Are you I went are back you to striving it. to get a fan base in Alliston? I need. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> yeah. Like I mean. I'm never I, going back to I, Alliston. I've walked away because you you you're, you're unless there's to, some white girls that are looking to fuck or some shit. You're trying to bring good wishes. Your good intentions. We're all gonna have a laugh. I I don't. I've I'm just here to make everybody city. laugh. Yeah. That's all it is. And now yeah. You brought <laughs> no, because it wasn't like Barry white people. You know what I'm saying? Like Barry's north of Toronto. It's not like Barry white people. Very white people. There's plenty of niggas that go to that fucking college playing basketball and shit. So they're in and around the mix. You can go to their bar after and they're playing hip hop. They can have an understanding. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know. This they is like all this. This was all country. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's Barry's like juggalos. Yeah. Nah, like, <laughs> Barry's juggalo country. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> yeah. They're the worst. <laughs> they're the worst. <laughs> I had a better time in Barry than Alliston, so I enjoyed it. But yeah, yeah Barry's also, a little wild. It's like a retarded Calgary. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can now, see that. There's I can a lot see of that. Raised trucks. Mm-hmm. And it's, but the thing too is, as fucked up as this place is, you'll see like one girl working in a subway mm. making sandwiches, and you're like, you, I've you lean across the counter and go, sweetheart, you need to get the fuck out oh, of here. Oh, and they're fucking gorgeous as shit or yeah, some shit. You you clearly yeah. can see that you've got some hope and a bit of. All these dead fucking pilled out psychopaths. Yeah, here. don't let them drag you down. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah, you feel out. like just taking them with you. Like, 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 every, like girl, just come. every girl in Sweden. But then, you know, 
Yeah, so you went over to uh, you were over in uh, Helsinki and shit like that. Yeah, I've been. I've I heard they the fucking. That's where they make the models, man. I heard. Yeah, they're pumping them out over there, like at the machine. Yeah, they just turn this machine on and the models and, just come out built, walking, built to last. Like Christ, it's, it's the milk like you just you of the met. World. Yeah, like you meet one fifty two years old, looking like cool. twenty eight with two kids cool. and shit. I fucking love. It. I well, I lived in Sweden pretty much like. Three years mm. in Stockholm there, and uh, but um, yeah, they're just happy, good looking. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Well, you know the story behind that with the Vikings and shit, right? I don't know if you know this. Uh, the Vikings, uh, what they were doing at that in in well, well back in the day, if you had an ugly baby. Oh yeah, they put it they'd, down. They, they'd kill a baby. They throw it off a Thank cliff you. or something and kill the fucking baby. I've been writing letters to try to get this put back into, <laughs> yeah. you know, or get it implemented There's right here many, in other countries. I'm tired of fucking <laughs> ugly people. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm a cat. Yeah, can you imagine that? You fucking up. Sorry. This, this, what'd you guys think? There was like a, I guess, a jury or something like, nah, that baby's ugly as shit. And they would kill the fucking baby. And that's why now you go over there and it's all this gorgeous ass people, you know what I'm saying, who are so laid but back you can't and kind tell and that stuff. Baby. I, a baby, you can't tell? How many babies? Fucking, you can't Apparently tell they had the. Okay, but now you go to. Puberty? But now you go to Helsinki. And you're like, well, I guess they had the insight, you know what I mean? Because well, there was uh, it's there hot was, people uh, over there. They did sterilizations. They would take strychnine and swab the inside of the uterus, <laughs> oh, so they could fuck. reproduce. So if you had a history of like ugliness, ugliness, any disabilities, you know what it may be. Oh shit! They would fucking cut off your bloodline, and, and then that's it. Of producing like these. Fucking so instead of throwing throwing ugly people off the cliff, they just they you probably know. started with that, and they're like, "Listen, we got a, a truck full of dead babies here. Yeah, who's yeah. gonna shovel this? Who's gonna eat all There's of these?" There's a Canadian guy <laughs> hanging around there with a <laughs> <the laughs> hanging out. Why well, is that guy happy over this there? This one's still warm. Can I <laughs> go inside? Hey, if it's a dead baby, it's not really a charge. <laughs> if now, it's is not it? named, it's not <laughs> loved. <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so it's, it's great. I enjoy mm. um, Iceland. Is the shit. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you were telling cool. me, man. You were telling me about them Scandinavian countries, man. Iceland, I, um, Narnia. My thing is, I'm always, and you don't do this, but I'm always in the south. Oddly and enough, my man, like I just did Miami. My word, the yeah. women, and I mean, a lot you know, of remember Cuban, a lot you of Cuban were chicks, all right? that shit, Cuban, Dominican. Everything, like everything. But let me tell you, man. You they remember? Must smell great too. You, oh man! I mean, it is. You remember? You know, doing like that Toronto club on any given night. Young and Eglinton. Say Young and Eglinton, and you know, on any given night, you know, you do a Friday or a Saturday or something, even a Thursday. And let's say it was packed. Let's say it's two hundred fifty people in there. You know, there was like a group of girls that came, and you'd be like, ah, oh, there's some bad ones in that one. You know, I got some bad girls over there, but the rest of them are with their boyfriends and shit like that. In Miami, it was like predominantly single women. At comedy shows? Bad. And I'm talking Drunk. ass, tits, uh, flat stomach, bad, super bad. So you go to a comedy I, show and then go to the club. That's all it was, man. Or they just hit the main strip. So walk down Ocean they, Drive, just they kicking you're from it. from Canada? Oh, they knew I was from Canada. They, I, and you know what the funny Their thing accent. is? Everyone thinks I'm like I have an accent when I'm here in Canada, but when I'm out there, they're like, yo, you know, you really sound like a white guy. Like I got it three times today in New York. <laughs> I got it three times today in New York. They're like, where are you from? You sound like a white guy. I got I was in New Orleans. And I went to a Wendy's and I was like, uh, hi. Hey, I'm just stopping you in the like, street. Uh, yeah. Hey, like, could, you, uh, could you black it up a little bit? You're making the breast. Excuse me. You're going to have to nigger it up there. Uh, we're going to have to take away your nigger. Where's your nigger card? Let's have a look at it. I'm like, please, I need this. this. Fired a week I ago. need this it. Is, this is the problem. <laughs> Jesus. I got to re-up. So I'm there. I'm in the New Orleans. And like, so the lady, um, I walk in there and I'm like, hi, how you doing? And she's like, all right. Because, you know, nobody ever says, hi, how you doing? We're, we're yeah, Canadian. Like, what do you want? Like, what the fuck's the matter with you? Yeah. you you're here for conversation. It's Wendy's. Get your food and get totally, the fuck out. Totally, totally. Right? And I'm like, like okay. Disgusted. Yeah, they're like, all Are right. Like crazy? Yeah. So, I, so I'm, like, I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's a weird place to be. I'm, yeah. I'm just trying to be a nice dude. So I says to her, she's like, uh, no, so she says, what you want? You know, that's their way of saying, you know, uh, you know, uh, how may I help Excuse you? Excuse me. Help uh, how may I help you? Okay. It's uh, what you want. I'm yeah. like, okay. Uh, I like it. Get to the point. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, uh, let me just get some fries. And she's like, all right, you want a value fries? 
I said, excuse me? Oh, yeah, yeah, So yeah, you yeah. want a value fries? No pronunciation. I'm sorry, one more time? The value fries. You want a value fries? I think I've I'm had like, the same conversation. So I says to her, I go, I'm, 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 not a, I'm not 100% sh- sure. She said, hold on. So she turns around and she's helping somebody in the drive-thru quick. And I'm, I'm looking at the board. I'm looking at the, the menu and I'm like, what Trying the to figure out the code, what she about? said, yeah. And I look at it and she comes back and I'm like, I'm sorry. Were you asking me if I want the value fries? And yeah. she's like, yeah, the value fries. Yeah, but yeah, that's re- not what you said. Not at and all. And she's like, well, you know, you do talk like a white man. And I was like, that's the only at Wendy's. That's <laughs> hilarious. And I paid that's her and that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, shit, man. But I, I play a lot in the South. Like, I know you're in, you're in Europe. And so I, we got to switch. You got to send me to Europe and I got to take I, you to I the South. Trade up. It is, um, I mean, I did, I did Houston. Yeah, Atlanta. I'm going to be doing Atlanta in October, actually. Oh, you got to play Funny Farm out there yeah. and stuff like that. They got... Inc- I remember... I want, like, food. Me and my... Oh, man. Fuck a diet when you're out there, man. Especially yeah. New Orleans. Fuck a diet. Mm-hmm. You might as well just pound... Put it on, clog the arteries, then unclog them when you go back to where you're you're more settled. Go do yoga it in Portland is for a week. Amazing yeah. food. And I remember being in Atlanta. Me and my homie was there. We did this show. And we came in, we were at, we were at Twisted Taco. And we came off and we're looking at these two broads and they were so bad. And I was like, yo, which one you want? I said, I guess I'll take the one on the right. He said, all right, cool. I'll take the one on the left. And so we're just looking at, staring at them. When they finally turned around, one was white and one was black. We couldn't tell the difference from, from the behind. Ass, from the ass? We could not tell the difference from behind. But was it Everyone healthy had, ass or just... Listen, it was, it was white people would fuck this big ass. Because you know, like, there's like a berry, like, you know, there's like... Sourdough. There's like a 10 pound, like, you know, once it gets past that mark, white people are like, that's fat. You know what I'm saying? But niggas will still fuck it. You know what I'm saying? And and walk down the street with it like, yo, this is my wife. Not like an indoor thing. Not an after 2 a.m. call. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I respect. After the 20 pounds, it's like, yo, that's it. This is going to be an indoor There's thing. black fat. Th- th- exactly. That's But it, that <laughs> happens to be 20 with... pounds heavier than white fat. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Black fat is 20 <laughs> pounds with this, or without diabetes. Yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> so so we didn't even know when they turned around we're like oh shit like one was white and one was black so we had no idea but i mean beautiful people in atlanta man beautiful people yeah, i think that accent. the south is crazy man you gotta you gotta play the south man i played houston atlanta the girls uh, miami too, don't they well you know what's different in miami is like you're on ocean drive in the daytime and you're chilling you walk down ocean drive or you drive down the strip whatever right and you'll see a girl just walking around. She got tight shorts on and her big ass is hanging out. Beautiful legs. She's fucking five nine. Tits everywhere because she just wearing the bikini top. Jesus. And you're thinking anywhere else in the world, they'd be like, what a fucking slut. No. This is Miami. And there's how 40 do more girls doing the same yeah. thing on this block. Like, this is the norm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The yeah. only thing that this is the norm. the norm. So no one looks. It's like when you go to Montreal, right? And you go to Montreal and you're like, you know, after the show, you can meet a girl and the girl will be like, oh, yeah, yeah. Where are you from? Oh, I'm from Toronto. Oh, okay. Well, I'll hang out with you. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. What? And even then her friends will be like, yeah, go hang out with the Toronto guy. Show him a good time. Whereas if it was Toronto, it'd be like, no, you can't hang out with yeah. her. She had too much to drink. Her fat friends were yeah, girl, talking you. Yeah, 100%. Whereas in Montreal, it's the complete opposite. It's like, no, it's customary for us to show you a good time. So you tell your you friends, know you would not believe the pig I fucked in Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> this girl, I ate cheese and gravy out of her asshole. Every time. <laughs> You would too. <laughs> Every time I'm in Montreal, I fuck some so of the great. baddest ones I had yeah. ever seen in my life. Yeah. Like, badder than the next one. And I'm just like, how are you so bad? And just wa- walking down the street, they know you're not from there. Like, you're, you're not from around here. And I'll even try to bust some French on them. And they're like, you're definitely not from yeah. around here. And City boom, they're back stands. at the hotel. They're, mm, they're back at the hotel. Yeah, they're yeah. game for And they even tell their friends, like, yo, I'm going to go hang with the Toronto guy. And the friends are like, yeah, go, in the morning. go hang with the Toronto guy. Like, give him a good time. Don't let them fucking come here and think we, we're some we're no Montreal fun. snobs. Like, we're them yeah. some Toronto bitches. We're fucking we're, some Montreal top bitches. 
You know what I'm saying? Where niggas are like, yo, I would with, wife that fucking girl. With a cigarette hanging out of the corner yeah, of her mouth. Yeah, <laughs> she got the cigarette hanging out. She got a fucking cigar. You know what I'm she saying? Got a cigar. She one got in, one in her pussy. You kiss her and her fucking breath tastes like fucking the last nigga's condom and fucking cigars. Don't air. <laughs> <laughs> Dracar Noir, mm. uh, uh, Magnum Spermicide, and fucking uh, 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 Du Maurier cigarettes is what her breath uh. smell like. But she bad as fuck. D- fucking 9.5 out of 10. Bad as fuck. Works at yeah, the bank. I like it. They're sexy, you know but saying? a little rough around the edges, too. Yeah, yeah. And even when they, they, they do the real Quebecer shit, you know what I'm saying? They're like, I bang. Oh, 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 and you're like, yeah. how the fuck do you sound like the 40 year old nigga beside you? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're kind of rough, but yeah. baddest, some of the baddest chicks I've ever seen in my life, man. Yeah. I love the South too, man. Guy hit the South. It's really nice, man. You on know what I'm saying? List, on my list. Definitely. We'll switch. We'll o- switch. October, November, I think I'm going to try and. Yeah, do man. Some stuff in yeah, the we'll States. try to do that. Bad yeah, bad. if I'm out there, you know, we'll try to set it up so we can go at the same time, man. It's beautiful out there, man. I had so much fun. Yeah, there's not too yeah. many Canadians that actually do the road. Not in the parade. South. Yeah. No, I feel like the Canadians get the paperwork and they hit LA or they hit New York yeah, and they uh-huh. feel like that's the place that they need to be. And and yeah. justifiably so. Sure. That's where the shit's being shot and this, that, and the mm-hmm. shit. Sh- I mean, like, Close they got to a, they have a small television uh, 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 um, uh, industry in Atlanta. Small, but very mighty. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? There's plenty of TV, uh, TV shows that are on the nigger networks there, UPN comedy, and all that shit. Comedy festival. All that shit's being yeah. shot in, in Atlanta. A lot of that's all the love and hip hop. A lot of that shit was in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. All that, so sh- Atlanta's really booming. To some degree, they did, uh, what was that other one? Uh, 90 Day Fiance, they did one of those. Uh, um, 90 Day Fiance? Yeah, that shit blew What's up that? on A&E or some shit. It's, yeah. What you have a ninety day for ninety days. You just you just date the person and find out whether or not you're gonna marry and they them. They follow you around. And then there was another one where married at was first sight was in Atlanta. Was it about a blind couple? Nah, man, <laughs> it's blind dating, and they and they had all the races too. So when you hit Atlanta, because I always thought Canadian. it's fucked up because we grew up listening to obviously all hip hop and all rap music and shit. So we always thought Atlanta was what we saw on the TV. So we just thought, okay, so Atlanta's like, you know, cars with rims and fucking hydraulics and bouncing around and niggas with gold teeth and dreads and all this shit. My dude, you get to Atlanta and there's like every race person, every color, just like New York. You know what I'm saying? And and you're like, oh, I didn't notice. You're so ignorant. You know what I'm saying? I went to Houston. Houston had so many Asian people. I could, I was blown away. I had Asian cowboys? Hilarious Asian people And I was like How the fuck are there Asian people out here But because I'm such An ignorant ass nigger All I saw was Rap videos yeah, yeah, yeah. Of niggas and hot girls And I'm just thinking Well that's Houston But yeah. it's not like that And you get down there And some of the kindest people Southern hospitality Yo listen man Don't let anybody tell you Canadians are the nicest people On the on the planet That is the no, biggest yeah, lie yeah. I have ever heard Southern hospitality Destroys Canadians Really? People Even in the, the South are Newfies, so Newfoundlanders. nice. Well, yeah, the Newfoundlanders are really nice, though. Really yeah, when you go that. east, when you when you talk about Canadians being nice, you're talking about the East Coast. Yeah, hundred percent. They're they're like super super nice. Yeah, yeah always. They don't get the respect they deserve. Yeah, yeah. Well, because they, I don't know. I guess the only person, they, <laughs> the only person they put on the map over there was Majumder. Really, I mean, and I guess maybe Ron James. Uh, no, 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 and uh, um, Jimmy Flynn. Do you know who Jimmy Flynn is? I'm not is? familiar with Jimmy <laughs> Flynn. He used to do comedy at Club 54. He, okay. he wore like a rain jacket and a hat. He's a fisherman. He told like old bar jokes. <laughs> guy sold VHS tapes. He was huge. Hey, he was fucking huge, yeah, eh? Yeah, he's from uh, Shit. outside of Moncton. Yeah? Yeah, he's all right. his house. He's, he's, his home's a museum. So Get people come and see all his shit. Yeah, the guy's a superstar. I will look this guy up. I will like look this guy up. Elvis yeah. Fisherman. So they 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 forgot like the respect they did. When they're talking about Canadians being nice, I think it's out there that they're talking about because yeah. they're not talking about Torontonians. You know what I'm saying? Well, so like your interaction with the lady at the uh, you know what do you want at the uh, Wendy's? And That's stuff. her being nice. Yeah. That's the whole thing. It's, like it's a cultural. Thing. You walk into the store and they're like, um, "How y'all doing? I'm good. What you want?" That's their, hey, how's it going? Uh, what can I help you with? Yeah, yeah. So at first, you're kind of taken aback, like, how the fuck are you going to ask? But then you hear it in every store. You're like, no, no, no. This is the common way to talk. Totally. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it is. What you want? You're in the footlocker. What you want? Was this uh, a shakedown? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, uh, I'm browsing, sir. What the fuck? Am I bothering you by being in the store? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, you yeah. realize they say this to the next four people who walk in. Yeah. 
and that's just how they talk, and it's them being really kind, as a matter of fact. Yeah, and I think it's the cult, it, the city. It's a busy place, so they're like, "Get to it. Mm. Well, can I help you? Because mm. if you can't, I got someone else. I got to keep doing this until someone goes. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. You know, because it's they're on the clock. Mm. This, this city has a whole pace. You fuck with uh, you fuck with Chicago. Never been to Chicago. No, you never been. Never. Only place I've been like Portland. Mm. Mm. So yeah, just from the coast, from L.A. up to Vancouver. Listen, man, the skateboarding in Portland is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. I've been to Portland, but not the skateboarding since Skateboarding out there is so beautiful. It's still really nice out well, there, Well, they have Burnside man. Skate Park under the bridge, big concrete park. Crazy. Crazy, yeah. man. Crazy. Love that. Um, Chicago. See, me, I'm a, I'm a bit of a shopaholic. I love to shop. You know what I'm saying? So I know for me, like, I'm all about hitting the stores and everything. And again, early birds. So once I'm up, I'm up by 7 a.m. I've worked out. I've showered and changed by 9 o'clock. I hit the strip. And I walked the whole magnificent mile. Uh-huh. I remember staying. I stayed at Hotel Blake. And I remember it was near the, where the Chicago White Sox play. And I remember walking all the way up, all the way up. And I was near Wrigley Field where the Cubs play, mm-hmm. right? So you got to think of it. In the same city when they have two teams, the only reason why they would have two teams is if they had a big enough population to support both teams. But more yeah. importantly, they separate them on opposite, opposite ends of the They'll city. kill each other. But because I love shopping so much, I had walked from literally one opposite end of the city to the next yeah. and back. And I remember the bellhop was like, where'd you go today? I'm like, I just walked by Wrigley Field. He goes, excuse me? Oh, yeah, yeah. They can't wrap like, their head around it. I went to Wrigley Field. He goes, you're aware where the White Sox play is right over there. And I was like, huh? Yeah. And it was like, oh, I had I had no idea. I had walked that far. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I saw the city. Man, beautiful yeah, yeah, theaters yeah. in Chicago. I played the Chicago Center for the Arts out there. Mm-hmm. Man, it was immaculate. Yeah. It was beautiful. They had the nice balconies and all that shit. Crazy. Yeah, yeah man. There's Chicago's some- nice. Great people. Real mixed. Real mixed crowd of people. It, I always thought that Toronto was really multicultural, but like, you can come to New York. You can go to Atlanta. You can go to you can go to Chicago. You can see some... I mean, look, this is not fucking... It's not Maine, where you know you're not going to see no niggas <laughs> for the or whole ba- two Vancouver. weeks. Vancouver. Yeah, you're not going <laughs> When I was in Vancouver, that people were just staring at me like... Oh, your unicorn just walked through the front the, yard. What the fuck? Is that, a, is that a nigga walking down the street? Like, yo, that's like yeah, that shit Japanese we see on people. TV. They're looking at you like, what are you doing here? Yeah. What do you want? I'm like, fuck We're you. Full. I'm like, you got a visa. Get the fuck out of here. You go to, the fuck, you go to UBC, yeah. bitch. I lived there you for three <laughs> years. I saw... Two black people in three years. Yeah, like there's people. four in the whole province, I think, and one of them's locked up. <laughs> I swear to I God. Know, I know. And when Daryl Lennox moved there <laughs> in 95, he, got this, he doubled the population of yeah, niggas. He was like a, a fucking just a big black dude. <laughs> and uh, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. I didn't know you were out there for three years, though, man. Yeah, I started there in 95. Oh, okay, 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 yeah. okay, okay. I jumped Hamilton in 93 and mm. did my first show in 95. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, yeah. all right. It went fast. Mm. It went real fast. It blows by, man. It really does blow by, yeah. Me and Jostle run into each other. I ran into Ron Jostle mm. on Granville Street mm. at like 8 in the morning. There's no one on Granville Street. Mm. We're walking towards each other. <laughs> like, what? We're on some hidden camera show. And it kind of it's me. I hug him. I go, hey, he goes, I'm going to Kelowna. I go, oh, I'm going to the airport now. We didn't even know we're in the same country. Never mind oh, the street. Fuck, the, yeah. The strangest one of all that mm. Trump's one of those kind of running. Because you run into comics in various places. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Time goes by, but... Terry Clement mm. was coming over to England when I was living there and uh, to do some shows. I gave my number. I said, listen, when you get uh, settled in your hotel, call me. We'll meet up. I'd love to take you out of the town, blah, blah, blah. I get a phone call from him. He's like, I'm in England. I'm like, great. I go, I'm in Birmingham doing some gigs. But uh, when I get back to London on Sunday, we'll meet up and go out or something. Mm. He's like, I'm in Birmingham. I'm like, you're in Birmingham. 
I go, where? He goes, somewhere near the train station at our hotel. I'm checking somewhere in. near the train station. Yeah. And I go, where? My hotel is near the train station. He's in the lobby checking in. I'm in room 311. He's in 310. He knocks on the door. No, no, no. He, he, I don't know if he was on the same floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, he was in the lobby checking into the hotel. And you're like, it was, fuck we, me. We looked at each other like, Of all what? the hotels in all of, the yeah. whole world, you Shit. know, the odds. But uh, yeah, it's mm-hmm. so freaky. He's still over there? No, no, no. Terry's uh, in Brampton. In Brampton? Oh, okay. Brampton. Brantford? Brantford. Maybe Brantford. I don't know. No, Brampton. No. I'm in Brantford on Friday, actually. I got a show out there. Oh, are you? Yeah, well, I won um, I won an award uh, the other day. I, saw, I think I saw the plaque. Yeah, there was a I Lifetime guess. Achievement Award, which is, what is who, strange because I'm 34. I'm, I'm 35 now, and I don't, Samuel L. Jackson I don't have no here? kids that... <laughs> I know I'm, I'm like 87 years old, but I look 35. Um, I did, um, yeah. So it's the Tri City, which is like Kitchener, Cambridge, a lot of Waterloo, and I guess you know they they're going to relegate the name because it's like you could add in Hamilton and Brantford because they're all so close. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I mean, they had there was the the people who organized the award show. They come to Toronto all the time, and they had seen me doing comedy, and uh, it just started to spread because. They went back and were like, yo, Quinn's hilarious. Some people out there started coming to my shows. Like, because, you know, especially with the internet, things spread so quickly. They would post yeah. it on their wall. Found a fan and, base. And it, but before I knew it, I was literally selling shows out in that area. So I can I could go to Brantford now and sell out a, a, a small theater of 250 people. Sold out easy, no problem. Maybe even two, three times a year I can do it. That's people great. love having me out there. So um, I had been getting awards from them for, I think, four years. And this was the fifth year. So they just gave me a Lifetime Achievement Award, which I think is their way of saying no more awards yeah, for you out. take the bench, but uh, but it's 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 really dope. So I just got booked on a show uh, Friday, and same thing. I mean, it, it's already sold out. The uh, the people who do the tickets and everything, they said as soon as your name was on it, people sold it. It's amazing. Isn't nice? It's amazing how Isn't it just picks nice? up. Yo, when you get that call, like the shit sold out before, you know, like a week before or five days you before. Just focus on you, and you don't have the angst. You don't have to worry about shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. I love that. I really do love that. So yeah, I got that on Bram- in Brantford. If if that's where Terry Clement is, it'd be nice to see him. Oh you know yeah, I try and get Terry out all the time. Yeah, he's yeah. always home with his missus. Mm-hmm. But I think I'm gonna show up like <laughs> drugs out of my I show face. up at his house. Yeah, with a baseball see? bat and just <laughs> threaten his all his pets. <laughs> I think he's got about nine cats or something. <laughs> And I'm going to shave them all down in the lions and then hook them up to a dog give, give sled. Give the classic Jason Rouse. You got to wear the skulls when you do that shit. I got them. You got to wear somewhere. the skulls. Yeah, Yo, you wear that shit it. at the airport? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I bag up everything. You bag everything. Cover all my tattoos. Yeah. Like, oh, officer. Oh. Yeah, you know what, man? Me and my friend were talking about this shit because he's like, Yo, you got the paperwork, so fuck it. I said, my nigga, we're black. And we are like one shade off of the the guys whose last name is fucking Hussein and all that shit. Yeah, we're, we're not doing that. You know, say no. act as white as possible at the uh, fucking border. Every time I cross the border, I, I got polo the fucking shirt. my nigga. I got this Cuban Lincoln, Lincoln shit. I remember I bought that shit. My nigga was like, "Yo, you gonna wear that shit?" I'm like, "Yo, that shit's getting tucked right in." Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? Oh, this whole thing. Nah, I, I didn't even know I was wearing this. This it's fake. Yeah, you know, I tell yeah, them yeah. all that shit because My all it son. takes is that one guy to look at you and be like, that motherfucker he's has a better. chain yeah, he's that costs dude. more than my car. I'm going to pull over full cavity search for this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Whatever it is. You think you're cool, young yeah, man? You think, you think you're better than me? Your I take the loose. ring off. I take the, at most maybe a watch. Sometimes I even take the earrings out and just put them away because they're diamonds. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? And I've, it, all it takes is one guy to really be like. You don't want to look broke and humble. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Absolutely. I want to look yeah. like I could take a job interview at least. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Actually, but I'm uh, here with my application. That's I'd, like to work with you, younger. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to stop some of this filth that's coming into our country. The gentleman behind me smells like cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> it's two old ladies. <laughs> They're yeah. like, yo, I got it from him. <laughs> Here's my card. My, I also a uh, personal pursuit. <laughs> Chiropractic. I'm telling you, man. Like, when you go to the airport, it's like, because that's what my homie was telling me. You know, this is one of my same niggas who never really been around, never did nothing, whatever. That's why sometimes in this comedy shit, I really just want to blow up and get all the money in the world so I can really, just like Entourage, take a couple of homies' places that yeah. they have never seen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
And, uh, you know, like fucking, I remember my nigga was like, yo, you got the paperwork, so they have to let you in. Like, no, no, no. These are the border. They do whatever the shit. fuck they want. That guy gets in a fight with his wife that day. Everybody gets the axe. <laughs> that's, that's, Everybody. I tell they you what get happened whatever Manolis, they want. Yeah. Manol, uh, I when I got my green card, I mm. had to go to the nearest uh, border to file some paperwork and do a short interview. Mm-hmm. So Manolis, he's talked about this on air. Manolis ran the border with an ounce of weed. I remember that story. Yeah, yeah. That was a great joke. He turned it into a joke and he fucking blew rooms apart with that shit. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. He blew through the security gates with an ounce of weed. Anyway, dummy gets in the wrong uh, turn off and ends up going to the U.S. Customs Mm. with an ounce of weed in his trunk. Mm -hmm. Does a UAE, blows through the border. Anyway, so he's on record for that and I got turned back from Customs because an ex-girlfriend of mine had told them that I was going there to work illegally, which wasn't true, but mm-hmm. I was listed on a website for an event, and uh, but I wasn't receiving any money or anything. Mm-hmm. But she had a spite under the circumstances. Mm-hmm. She called U.S. Customs. So I got turned back and moved to Europe. Mm. And while my lawyer was doing all the paperwork, I was in England and doing my thing. Mm-hmm. So me and Manolis, Manolis is kind enough to drive me to the border mm. to file my paperwork. So me, Manolis, Manolis and I, are there to file my paperwork for my green card. We have not been back to the border since, since those we've things. had our own personal 9-11s yeah. with them. Yeah, yo, for sure, yeah. So we pull up, hands on the wheel, guns drawn Jesus up on the car, Christ. get out of the car, get out of the car. Guys yelling in my face, ah, freaking out on us, thought that they he, they got some fugitives when yeah. they were going on. And I'm like, oh, man, this is fucking brutal. I go, my paperwork, my file's sitting on the dashboard. I wanted to put it out in sight so I wouldn't have to reach mm. for anything. I don't mm. want to. You know. And then they uh, took us in. The guy's yelling at I'm a comic. I can handle the pressure, mm. right? So he's trying to get all fucking bad lieutenant in my yeah, face. Yeah. And I'm trying not to laugh. Mm. But I know that he's he's... His job you, is conditioned him you, to... You don't believe him. You know what I mean? You're like, I know you're putting this on when really you're the bitch nigga who's got to get the Timmy's run totally. and bring everybody's fucking coffee. Totally. Yeah. I know psychos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They don't sound like you, no. nor do they take this job. No. Yeah, no. yeah. They don't hang out with witnesses, that's for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, they separate me and Manolis, and Manolis is about as sharp as a bowling ball, so I'm worried about getting shot because of them coming over and going, I heard what you did in math class <laughs> in 1988. Manolis is like, fucking, uh... Shoot him now! I just drove, uh, fucking, uh, that guy, uh, fucking, uh, Jason, uh... Fucking uh, Rouse. Uh, why are you still figuring out his name? Fucking, uh, I don't know his name. I, I think it's Jason, whatever. <laughs> you're like, and here's your first act. <laughs> and you're like, ah, shit. Here don't we- fuck me up. And you're like, in your head, I they separate scared. the two of you. And you're like, yo, I hope he just says, what? I hope he just says, I'm there to drive my man to no. get the fucking paperwork done. Of course. That's all not. you're thinking in your head. No, I know he's not saying that. <laughs> that's, that's what I mean. <laughs> I need that. <laughs> but uh, it all worked out. Yeah, it was yeah. It's fucking sketchy, though. I don't enjoy it. Yeah. Going into the airport at Russia. Mm. I can't remember what uh, airport it was in Moscow, but German Shepherds, fucking AK 47s, mm. you know, strutting through the airports. Mm. And I'm just like, you're not in Kansas anymore. Like, yo, they're coming for you. Buddy. Shit, man. I always get nervous at the board. Even if I'm not doing anything illegal, I'm not around nothing illegal, but I take my shit off and everything. Well, they, just to show some respect. Like just to show them some respect. They like to see a little respect. You know what I'm saying? That's all they want. They want to go down on one knee. They want you to bow. <laughs> I told you a cop yeah, in Montreal fucking got me. Yeah, face. you told me that story. Yeah, yeah. They wanted me to apologize. It was pretty interesting with Hunter speaking French mm-hmm. fluently mm-hmm. and uh, him translating in anger. Angry French. <laughs> was he selling the angry cop? <laughs> like, was he really selling Here's it? Another though? guy getting all aggro on me, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm half corked, and I'm just smiling, and it's just getting more aggravated. Mm-hmm. Aggravated. I can't, I can't take you serious. You get, there's, I went, you can't beat me here. You can take me to the station. And then it will get weird for everybody because I'll rub my own shit on my chest <laughs> when you start hitting me. You're like, uh, I yeah. think he's enjoying this shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's handcuffed, him, but his erection won't go down. <laughs> we keep hitting him. <laughs> my friend's in jail in Norway right now. Oh, for real? For yeah, what? 
uh, taxes. On oh, Vietnam. shit. That's the worst one right there. But it's Norwegian jail. It's like a spa. Oh, uh, the re- <laughs> like you're they gonna like stay at this five star hotel. Yeah, they, yeah, they're, yeah, they're very laxed. Yeah. You know, it's we're jail. gonna make you take a class on taxes, and then that's only one hour a week, and you gotta stay here for six months or some shit. Well, and the James rest Brown, a lot of celebrities, a lot of athletes. No, they catch they, everybody on taxes, man. Yeah, they catch everybody on taxes, and and you know what? The funny thing is. When I've read the articles on it and you see the guys with the taxes and they'd be like, yeah, but they're taking like half our money. You know, I made 30 million. If it wasn't for taxes, I, you know, I would I would have more than 15 million in the bank. It's like, yeah, but what the fuck you need more than 15 million for? Like, who am I to count your money? But you if back. half the money is taxes and you got a check for 5 million, you know, you have a check for 2.5 million. You know what I'm saying? You got too many but people that aren't your friends. That too. And you don't That's need to the do worst that. one. Yeah. That's the worst one. When they catch you with the taxes, when the tax man cometh, yeah. gang the fuck away. I knew a girl that was ignoring the letter, and I was like, listen, that's not a letter you want to ignore. Whatever that is, whatever that, whenever that letter comes back in again, I know you threw it in the garbage, pick up the phone, call them, and be as white as possible. You'll be all right. Yeah, but yes, if sir, you no, dodge sir. and swipe them, when Will they come and audited? find you... Way worse, Fucking way man. worse. Yeah, yeah. I remember they caught me once on something. They had audited me and said I owed like a certain amount. I think they said I I owed something like three grand or something. That's and I was lot. like, yeah. And they wanted an assessment of some of my shit. And when I ran it down and sent it back to them, they're like, we apologize. We owe you ten grand. And they oh, ended shit. up sending me more money. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. I was I was really happy about that. That's them so. doing their job. Look where it got them. I know, right? Fuck, it was wild. I, I thought I was like, shit, I'm going to send them back this paper and they're going to say, okay, you actually owe, you know, uh, 2400 sure. or some shit. They said, yo, we owe you ten grand." And I was like, all right, cool. And they sent me I'll the bucks. But, yeah. I'm going to need it to keep doing comedy in this country. Yeah. <laughs> These tax breaks are keeping my gigs alive in Saskatoon. You have no idea. <laughs> Saskatoon. I was in I was in Saskatchewan. Bragger. I was in... Was that where I was in Saskatoon? I actually I was in Saskatoon. Was it Motor City Inn or something? Or I think it was yeah. something like in the that. The hotel. I feel like it was Sask Saskatoon Inn or something like Sask. It could have been Saskatoon Inn. Okay. Yeah, it was in there, man. Yeah. I was there. I've done some shows there. Shit, that was 2014. I was out there. Fuck. Was there in December or something? Let me tell you something, man. It was no, no, no. It was it was still warm. It was still warm. I feel like it was May or some shit. Mm -hmm. And I was out there. And I remember I did the show out there. And my nigga, the girls were in love with me. But they were ugly as fuck out that motherfucker, man. You're going to rescue them. We've heard the rumors. They had some terrible ones. Nicest people. They but I didn't. Be, they're hideous. I didn't have. There were no <laughs> bad ones for me to bring back to the hotel. And I remember we went to the strip club Ooh. afterwards. And I went, I'm like, because you know, the strip club is like the one place you think you could at least find two End bad road, ones yeah. that'll at least sit down with you and talk because they're like, yo, we're the best looking in the province. Yeah. We know we are. You know what I'm saying? And we have to be with guys who are from out of town Oil because we're riggers. cooler than everyone else. With dog shit under their nails. And they have, and like they see the swag, so they see the tight pants, see the jewelry, whatever. I'm the nigger they see in the rap videos, and they're like, finally, <laughs> there's a real one. You oh know my what I'm saying? Ice cubes here. And I, yeah, like they, there's like, a, they're like, hey, how you do? I listen to rap. I'm like, I don't. Yeah, you know, I listen to Neil Diamond. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, okay, yeah, me too. You know, like just to fuck with them. And they'll, and I went, we went to the strip club, and I was just like, nah, even even here is kind of hurt. I'm not feeling it. And I you ended up leaving. I was like, nope, this I'm leaving. I went die. back to the hotel and I was just like, man, I'm going to read this Bible or something, man. There's nothing to do with this town. And that was it, man. Yeah. There was a there was a cartoon I used to watch called Forget About It. Forget About you, It? You know about that was one? Was it a mob cartoon? It was about this Italian family and the guy, Jesus. I think he had snitched to the mob or something, snitched to the, the FBI. And they put him in witness protection and the witness protection was his cartoon? family in... So the late night shit it came on that teletoon okay. and it came on later that was called forget about it and the guy I think he had talked to the mob 
Well, they caught him on some shit, and they said, we'll put you in witness protection, and the witness protection was in Saskatoon. Oh. Funniest fucking okay. cartoon. It's really fucking funny, man. There's but, some yeah. great stuff. You watch stuff on Adult Swim at all? Yeah, like yeah, of Ar- course. Archer and stuff like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That stuff is amazing. Well, cartoons is the new shit, because everyone yeah. knows they can get away with anything. That's it. No one has ever complained about a cartoon. I say the same You shit. can say whatever the fuck you want. I watch Family Guy, and I'm like... That's right in my vein. Oh, 100%. And people go fucking bananas. People, it's funny because like people want to hear the shit, but like in through a place. buffer, no, yeah, no, no, yeah. Through, through a chain link fence, yeah. through, no, through a net. Dirty. You know what I'm saying? Like I can be on stage and people be like, yo, you say nigger too much. And I'd be like, yeah, what are you listening to in the car? And they'd be like, oh, I'm listening to this fucking Kodak Black. I'm like, that guy says nigger, that guy says nigger before he says the first lyric. What are you it, talking about? But it's got a chorus. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that guy's saying nigger to a beat. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? But then it's like you're on stage. You're like, well, you know, well, you say nigger too much. And I'm like, well, it's because they're in the comfort of their car. And yeah. Kodak Black is not right beside them in the fucking vehicle saying mm-hmm. nigger, nigger, nigger. And to have, make them feel uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? But they want to hear that shit. And then if you go clean, I remember doing some shit in like Port Hope. Some shit like that. And I'm like, they wanted me to do clean, and I'm out there doing clean, and I'm looking at this guy on the stage, and he's like, yeah. And I'm like, yo, he like, no, he wants me. He's like, yo, say nigger. I just want to hear. I've never yeah. heard a black guy say nigger live in my life. I'm not even a racist fellow. I completely deviate from the plan. I bust a couple of N-bombs and some jokes. These people are on the Going floor yeah, crying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had to, when I was getting paid, I had to tell the lady, I'm like, listen, you can't report back to the people that I deviated because it was a corporate gig. Yeah. I say, you can't tell the people I deviated from the plan. And they're yeah. like, oh, no, no, we'll tell them you did perfectly clean this, yeah. that, and the third. And, and nobody was offended. Yeah. They thoroughly enjoyed it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just that, that one person. Oh, that's it's all it takes. It's always that one asshole mm. that just shows up with a fucking bug up their ass. You know, mm-hmm. I had the police come to one of my shows in Vancouver. For real? Yeah. Over man. what you're, like, you're performing? Yeah, a lady came, called the cops. Uh, hold, hold on a minute. So you had to be doing, like, an... I well, was no, going no, no. off. I was going you off. You had to be doing, was, like, but you had to be doing, like, an hour, and she yeah. called. At what mark do you think she called? Well, she stood up and stormed out. We got in a, a back and forth, oh, and then she stu- oh. left. The, the lady that forgot she was at a comedy show. Yeah. Go ahead. Plus, it's my show in Vancouver. Yeah, like, it's, the, it's like, like it's, it's it wasn't the, even like you were booked at something. It was like, this is Jason Rouse's yeah. show. Her friends clearly yeah. didn't like her, and that's why they brought her to the show. And she decided to go uh, back and forth with me, and it was... She lost. She so lost. She, I didn't want her to lose. I just wanted her to shut up mm, and mm, uh, mm. or leave, you know. Mm, but mm-hmm. she just kept continuing. So the cop, the, I hung up on him twice because they called my room and say, "Hey, uh, so and so officer here, we'd, we'd like to come down and talk to you about an incident that happened last night." I'm like, "Yeah, click, <laughs> ring, ring." I'm like, "Okay, click." And then the manager of the hotel is like, "Hey, this is the manager." There's actually a, an officer here that would like to talk to you. And I'd come down, and there's a young cop standing there. I walk up to him, and he's like, did you tell somebody in the audience last night that you were going <laughs> to fuck him with a knife to the throat? Because it reminded him of her father. Holy fuck! <laughs> and I start, I go, yes. This guy's the coldest... Yo, hold on. You got to hold on. Let it breathe for a second. You can't just say that line and continue the story. Like, like <laughs> let it breathe for a second. This guy just said well, she he told quiet. the audience member who was heckling, yo, I'm going to fuck you with a knife to the throat. Because it reminded her of her father. <laughs> That's why it was a little uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, I said that. Yeah. But I said it was also on videotape. You can watch the tape because I've yep. had situations. Yeah. And uh, cover mm-hmm. my own ass. And also I showed him, I go, look, there's warning signs all over the place. I go, you can look at Google me. Parent, parental see. advisory, warning. Oh, uh, explicit. Explicit. Nudity. Nudity. Yeah. Yo, this guy came out on stage at the end of the show. Fuck yeah. I remember I was hosting one time and you fucking came out with that shit. I didn't shake your hand. This guy had his dick tucked between his legs and all kind of shit. He came out and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, you did that shit on TV. I did. I remember you did that shit on TV. Yeah, man. But anyway, yeah, so what happened? Continue now. So he starts to tell me my own joke back to me, which is always hilarious. And then... (laughs) 
<laughs> is he giving it some justice though? Is he no. giving it? He's just he's, saying he's deadpan. He's, he's eyeballing me up and down. He's kind of a little confused about what this <laughs> is situation. He, is he reading it off his adults? Like he's, nah, he's at the open mic, or he had it memorized? He had his jokes memorized. He had your material memorized here. Yeah, underline knife. <laughs> you got to pronunciate that a little more. Ah, uh, yeah. But that was silly, and I, you know. So he's doing his time basically, and uh, you gave him the red light, I or did he go light. over his time? No, or he just, it was like a formality. It was he a good kinda... set. Was it a good set that he gave you there? <laughs> no, he killed it. He, <laughs> he didn't even smile. He's got none of my charisma or charm. So that yeah, yeah. So what? So what happened then? They just kind of gave me a a talking to to kind of just say, hey, we did it. We did it. Yeah, you know, like I wasn't doing anything illegal. I wish. <laughs> I need the press. Actually, me being It'd be nice. Right Fuck, now. I'd call the police right well, away. Now, it's, well, didn't that it happen to happen. some guy or some shit? The He's French Canadian guy. Yeah, he, he said some shit. Fine. Yeah, he said something about a disabled kid. I guess who'd met the Pope when he years earlier mm. and was supposed to be on his deathbed. Well, he's lived, mm. and I think the comedian made reference to him. Oh. Staying his welcome because after he's met the Pope and stuff, he should die by now. He yeah. just, you know, so they, they ran with that. Wow. He had to pay like, I don't know, a hundred grand or something. Yeah, because see, see, the fucked up part about it is, you know, I, I have this conversation with people a lot about what a joke is. And they always say, well, do you, they're always like, oh, I was joking. I'm like, do you understand what a joke is? Like, what constitutes a joke is the intention yeah. for it to be funny. Yeah. Okay, and either be it for one or more people, if you walk into a show, well, you walk into a comedy show, if you are seated in the area that the lights are off on, and you are looking at a stage, a focal point of one person, and the light is on that person, and they say, welcome, thank you for coming to this comedy show, it's going to be a good night, anything said after that is intended to be funny, whether or not it is. Yeah. Yeah. Can, I get it. If I said that shit to you in the library, call the police and get me fucking arrested. Yeah. I get it. But I'm saying to you at the comedy show, you know what I'm saying? Regard, I mean, it's totally. never been and that talk, extreme talk for me, to me. But yeah. You, you don't know me from anything other than that. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you only know me as a comedian. Yeah. Yeah, that's what and I you mean. You don't think I'm funny. I didn't say it to you cool. at the fucking laundromat. Yeah. I said it to you at a comedy show. Come to your dinner table, lean over and go, so I'm fucking this hooker with a frozen piece of dog shit. <laughs> One of my favorites. Is though. that vegetarian gravy? Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm a close. One, One of my favorites, man. <laughs> yeah, there's been some wild. Oh, I really man. put Mark Breslin through the ringer with, you know, having doing whatever the fuck I wanted mm. for the most part. Mm. And uh, they had some crazy, crazy complaints, like mm -hmm. some handwritten letters mm -hmm. angrily. Mm -hmm. But I try and get everyone, my intention is to have everyone a little freaked out and have a good time. Yeah, but time. at the same time, you're the first guy they call when they're talking about doing the dark show or doing the nasty show or some shit like that, right? I auditioned for a nasty show for nine years. Before off, they let you in? On, yeah. Wow, they won't even let That's me. Fine. They won't even let me in the. They won't even let me in the festival, man. I've been emailing all them it's shifts. Hard. I emailed. I you know, the minute that you start doing stuff more outside of the country is when they call. That's when I got. That's how I got. I was living in London, mm. and my manager calls me and go, "They want you to audition." I'm like, "No," I go, "I've been doing this all every Fuck other it. year." Yeah, yeah, and I'm not really gonna get any better. And <laughs> this is mm. this is it. So mm. they go, "Just come and do it." Rocked it, walked away with it. Everyone's like, that's really good. Oh, man. That, you and know. you're like, get the fuck out of my face. Like, I'm I just like, did my shit and I just want to go back to England and perform. And no, I know no, these no, people no. are going to say. audition in England. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. So, okay. Yeah. But it, it, and then, then they gave it to me. But it was, you know, you just have time to get better and better. And then you just do a gala. You leapfrog all, you know, mm, one of your mm. new faces or any of that shit. Mm, Nasty mm. show, I think, is the most fun. Mm, mm. I got an Uptown show. Yeah, I, I was going to ask about the Uptown show. When did you do What year did you do it? I think 2007, I think. Shit, was that the year? With Patrice. I, I was hanging with Patrice O'Neill. I did a show with Patrice O'Neill in 2008, right after that. I was there, because the, the, remember Paul Provenza was doing the interviews. Uh, with uh, you know, because it was like room. twenty five years of yeah. like uh, 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 um, just for laughs or yeah. something, and I remember sitting in on some of the interviews, and I sat in on the pulp uh, on the Patrice uh, O'Neill one, uh -huh. and then it was the next year I did just for laughs Toronto myself Joe Coy and yeah, uh, and uh, 
and uh, and Patrice O'Neill. The three of us did it, man. At the Panasonic. No, we did it. We did it right at the the downtown Yuck Yucks. Ah, cool. yeah, changed my life. Remember? Patrice was on it. Yuck yeah. Yucks? Oh, he killed, bro. I remember oh. he came to me and said, "Yo, kid, I love what you're doing. Keep doing it." That's cool. I changed my fucking life. Yeah. But I remember he killed. I remember he had jokes about beating up his girlfriend. Yeah. And he was like, yo, my man, you ever just hit your girl? You ever just want to pop her? And I remember watching the girls in the <laughs> audience cry of laughter. Yeah. And I was like, this guy's next level. Like, yeah, 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 that's yeah, yeah. when you know. Jedi shit. That's when you know you're on the next level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could never pull off. But you're sharing a stage. You know what I'm saying? You're so my, my like yeah, that. like my, my, obviously, role was different. But I remember he, fuck, he was amazing, man. But yeah, 07, what that, that was Patrice. Who else was it? Wasn't, um, it was amazing. Cat Williams was on that shit. No, it was Nick DiPaolo hosting. Yeah. Chris Neff, Otto and George, Joe DeRosa. Patrice yes, O'Neal. Joe DeRosa was on that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, there was a lot of New York guys and then some Mayhem. guys. Yeah, it was insane. It was yeah. all assassins. Everybody assassins. Oh, and man. And DePaulo hosting. When are you going to see Nick DePaulo hosting? Never. Yeah, and never. Annihilate it every day. Wow. Night. It That's what great. I like, man. I love soda. that shit. I love that shit. That's the beautiful shit about like festivals and shit like that. You really get to see the mixtape yeah. of stand-up comics, totally. your favorite. It's a good analogy. Where else are you going to get, you know, Jay-Z, Fabulous, fucking, you know, oh, uh, uh, two chains, all of them all on one tape. You know what I'm saying? Even if they're not working together, they're all on the one tape. That was it's yeah. the mixtape. And that's what I love about those festivals and stuff like that. Yeah, that's always legends. a good thing. But they, they ain't never let me in that shit, man. Winnipeg, all that shit. I yeah, fucking no. sent all that shit. I'm like, man, whatever. But then, yeah, you come to the U.S. and have some good times out here, man. I yeah. love it out here. Oh, totally. When yeah. they close one door, you just fucking can't. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, well, a lot of they, they train us to believe when we're coming up that, like, it's, like, this big. Mm. And you got, like, maybe two, three options. Maybe two. And if you piss one off and the other one catches wind of you pissing one off, then you oh, could probably lose cards. both of them. Yeah. And it's like, nah, like, I'm going to go perform out here. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And it's like, oh, shit, well, he knows. Yeah. You know what That's I mean? Why if your scene sucks, mm. start a new one. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. 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 Producing. I mean, you were telling me how you were producing, uh, you know, some stuff out in L.A. or whatever, some small shows and everything at the, what was it, Laugh Factory you're doing in that? Improv. At the Improv. And, uh, and uh, for myself, like, you know, producing my own shows, man, it's a lot of fun. You know, I just yeah, had. A lot of work. It's, it's work. But you know what? A guy like you, you know, we're, we're you know, we have small fan bases. You have a, a much larger one, obviously. But I have a small fan base wherein I, I take out a, a, a you know, decent-sized venue and I sell it out. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's not really that much work. Like, I have to really pump it to get the, the seats. The seats yeah. are sold. They know I'm going to bring all new material. That's just what I do. They know my flyers are always fresh, and they know it's always a good time, especially date night. They can bring their girls, or they can bring their man. Consistent. They know they can bring their friends. It's consistently good, but it's amazing to do pull, pull one of those magical nights. I remember I did one night, and it was myself. Roy Day just hit me like the day before, like, hey, my gig got canceled. Can I come and perform? Yeah. And I shot him some cash. I said, please come down. Oh, and nice. then Lenny Corrado came down. Uh, uh, there was a Is few it, other people. Who, huh? Is Lenny the Butcher? Lenny the Butcher, yeah, yeah, yeah. I when I first saw him, I said Lenny the Butcher is Al Bundy, and people were like, "I don't see it." And then he fucking started ripping rooms. That's I told you that motherfucker's Al Bundy. That GPS joke that he has, uh-huh. oh that shit's funny every I time. Seen him before, I've hung out with him. Oh my, my gosh, the blew the room apart, man. Okay, so it was it was nice, you know. Every so often, especially on the independent route, it's always nice. I remember I did a weed room one night, and it was myself and Rob Bebenick. And I hadn't seen Rob since fucking college. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And and I was like, yo, I wonder what Rob's got under his sleeve. Because I haven't seen him in a while. And it's Rob nice. was out in L.A. for a bit. Yeah. And then he was doing some other stuff. And he was in New York. He did Gotham and everything. And uh-huh. uh, he and I was like, I wonder what Rob's got up his sleeve. And I remember me and Rob put it down that night. It was it was a friendly battle, you know okay. what I'm saying? And it was it was it was it was beautiful camaraderie to see us all go at it. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And and I love that. I love those independent gigs where it's like, yo, you're on with these four people, and like you said, it's all assassins, and you're like, oh, 
this is going to be the shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And even then you say to yourself, well, I'm not going to be the guy who bombs on this shit. So you know you got to bring yeah. your best shit. And that they're you. all thinking the same shit. The audience doesn't know shit. And they're just sitting there getting the best shit one after the other. Yeah. Six comics, best shit. Anyone could have headlined, although that guy just happened to go last. Anyone could have hosted, although that guy just happened to host. Anyone could have went first, second, third, fourth, fifth. It just happened that way, and everyone Getting their kills. Money's worth. Those are the best ones, man. Those are the best ones. And what do you got coming up? You're in. Uh, where did you say next week? Uh, so na- uh, this so I guess Friday. Co- what what day are we? T- is today what day is it today? Wednesday. I think today's Wednesday. Fuck me. Friday. I'm in Brantford, but next week Friday. So that's December 16th. I'm at uh, Harlem Restaurant, which is downtown Toronto, and it's uh, 67 Richmond Street East. The show's called The Quinn Credibles. And, uh, you know, I got some of my favorites on there, some of my really good friends, my good comedy friends, and uh, you never know who pops by, and that's the best part about it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm always, I'm like, I, I take from you, man, you know, I try to welcome everybody to the stage. I try to, you know, hey, man, uh, you know, my gig fell apart, is it cool if I just jump on? I try to welcome everybody I can to the nice. stage. So, you know, you might show up and see some some faces you've seen on TV, you know what I'm saying? You might see some faces you've never seen before. Yeah. Whatever it is, they yeah. get some time, and then, uh, and then I headline it, you know what I'm saying, and that's... Uh, it's Friday, December 16th, and then got a couple of other things, some corporates and shit for the holidays, and then I'm off to uh, uh, Orange County. That's the second week of uh, January. I'll be uh, at the uh, at the Improv in Orange County. Fucking great. Yeah, yeah, good That's times great. out there. And, you're and I'm going to skateboard over there because oh, yeah. fucking, it's, I don't know what it is. I was, a semi, I was a semi-pro skater for eight years. A lot of people okay. don't know that. Um, and uh, they, I had never skated in January or February before, and there's something about it that yeah. just makes me like it that much Hearing more. Christmas songs with sunglasses on. And a t-shirt. Yeah. Like, this is fucking crazy, man. Yeah, so, you know, just trying to do that, man. Fantastic. I've, uh, and where people find you on Instagram and oh, yeah, yeah. all that stuff? Uh, Instagram is Quinn the Comic, Q-U-I-N-N, T-H-E-C-O-M-I-C. So find me on Instagram. Uh, uh, what's the other one? Uh, uh, Twitter, same thing, Quinn the Comic. Uh, my uh, my Snapchat is Quincent, Q-U-I-N-N-C-E-N-T. Uh, but everything else is just Facebook, man. Quinn C. Martin, I'll come up. Q-U-I-N-N space C space Martin. And uh, that's what it is. It used to be, I used to just fuck with Quinn Martin a lot, but uh, I got yeah. some I got some letters from actually Quinn Martin Productions about it. Okay. Um, and they are quite the big company. So I don't know yeah. if you know anything about Quinn Martin Productions. I'm sure you watched some some of the shows growing up, uh, Streets of San Francisco, uh, The Fugitive, okay. uh, 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 Canon. Uh, those shows, obviously, Quinn Martin Productions was like the biggest producer in the, uh, I think, the late 70s and uh, up until about maybe 87. Uh, they were the biggest for good 12 years, they were the biggest television show producers. And the statistic was they were making a million dollars a week in the 70s up until the mid 80s. And obviously still making money in syndication. So they sent me some letters about, you know, using Quinn Martin. So I just threw the C in there because I didn't want them to keep bothering me about it. So it's Quinn C. Martin. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've got some shows. Why don't you plug some of your show? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a fan. You know, I just I like to come that. and watch. Yeah, no. You know what I'm saying? Whenever you can just be somewhere, whenever you can just be somewhere, I like to just come and watch. When I hear you're in town and shit, I remember the last time you were in town, I didn't get a chance to make it, man. You had, because I know you just come by, you scoop up like 20 shows, then you're off. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, don't like to I always around. try to make one. I always try to make one. I didn't get a chance. I was out of town when you were in town. But uh, what you got going on, man? Because I'm trying to be there. Yeah, I got, what do I got? I got uh, December 9th here in New York at the Hi-Fi Club. And mm. then uh, this hardcore comedy show with some porn people, December mm-hmm. 16th at the Creek in the Cave. And then L.A., January 11th at Adults mm-hmm. Only. Mm-hmm. And then starting April, mm. Vancouver, Abbotsford, uh, Calgary, Edmonton. And Halifax and St. John, so far, maybe something. Maybe something in, in Toronto. I have something in Toronto. I'll be I just in did Toronto. I'll be in Houston mid, I think it's April 13th, 14th, or 15th, something like that in, um, in uh, fucking April. But if you're in and around there in Toronto, man, I'd, I'd 
I'd be delighted. Even if you're in Montreal, man, I'll swoop through and yeah, we'll and de- come we'll, check it, we'll man. Definitely I have a feeling we'll be working together. In the I'm New Year. looking forward to it, man. You're the boss, man. I, I've <laughs> I've been watching you, man. You've been you've been because you know, like you know, what I mean, I know you're trying to wrap up, but I, you know, I want to. I got to give some compliments when I come through to my man. You know, what I'm saying like I saw a lot of guys try to be like you, mm-hmm. and that was a sign that you were doing something different. Oh, yeah. And I I always said to myself. I got to be more me to make more people want to be like me. And people may not want to be like, I, I found a lot of people wanted to be, wanted to have similar content to what I had. Maybe not be like me personally, maybe not, you know, whatever, but they definitely wanted to have similar content. Um, I, I'd never heard people. Biters. I'd never heard people drop the end bob in Toronto until they saw me using it like regular street language. I remember, I remember one comic in Unless particular. Kenny Robinson show. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but I remember those guys. A lot of them were they'd frown on it. A lot of those, a lot of black comics would pull me aside and be like, "Yo, man, you shouldn't really be saying the n word." You know what I mean? And I was like, "Really? This is how I that talk would, in the street. This is just me Kenny. being me." And then I found like two, three years later, all of them started doing it a lot. And I remember saying to myself, "I wasn't even offended. I was like, I'm they're kind black of black Canadians." I kind of feel like Jason Rouse. I'm like, yo, people are trying to draw a little bit like, hey, you know, he's getting some success off of this. I could do it. Nice. I remember seeing some comics, you know, I mean, I'll name some names when we turn this shit off. But I remember seeing some comics who were like, yo, I'm going to start talking about, you know, uh, uh, fucking uh, the girl on her period and licking the, the, the juice off my dick. And I'm like, man, you wearing a shirt and tie. Like, what the fuck you talking about? You yeah. work at the goddamn bank All from though. nine to five. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. That's not you. So, you know, I was always a fan of watching you, you be you, because I knew I could never be you. I knew I was never like that. But uh, I always liked, you know I mean, the way that you were being yourself. It was all in. Just being yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's why I was so proud to see that you were on the Dice Man show. And again, on television, doing the Jason Rouse comedy. Not, hey, I'm on TV. Let me do this clean set so I have this tape so I can Mm -hmm. send it over here. Like, no, no. No, I'm going to do me on this network fucking TV. And whatever comes of it, be that as it may. You know what I'm saying? So got to just throw it to the ether. Yeah. Wherever it lands, it lands. Fuck it, man. I'm a fan. So, you know, I, I really appreciate everything that you do, man, for oh, comedy my, my and everything. Pleasure. Definitely, man. Definitely a fan. I'm glad to see any Canadian outside of Canada. Yes, sir. I'm always yeah, so. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show. Mm. Make sure you check them out online. Yeah, Quincy Martin. Put me on YouTube, man. Q-U-I-N-N, space C, space Martin. I got, I think I got 130 videos over there. The material does not overlap because I'm a writing machine. Fantastic. You know what I'm saying? So, and I mean. Serious. You do. Guest appearances. Yeah, on, uh, I'm Canada guest appearance. Labs. Yeah, I'm guest appearances on uh, on Sirius XM. Uh, that's channel 168. Um, frequently on the Todd Shapiro show. So uh, just uh, check me out, man. You could follow there. They'll let you know when I'm going to be on, and uh, it's good times, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right, man. Yeah. Don't kiss me on the mouth. Don't ask if you're hurting me. And if you hear the safe word, stop what you're doing immediately. Do you have pantyhose?